Well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and the new 2021 Lexus IS has been revealed, released, whatever. I don't know if you guys have seen it. If you have, please let me know your comments down below. And it has been revealed, and to a lot of you, this might be a complete failure in your eyes. And in this video, I'm here to give my thoughts because surprisingly, I actually just drove an IS350, a 2015 one, I just reviewed it. And I've actually also driven a IS350 F Sport. The changes that they've done to this car, I absolutely love it. I think that if I was able to drive this car, and one day, hopefully, I do get the chance to drive this car, I'm gonna absolutely love it. And I love the approach that Lexus took to make this car. Now, I'm not siding with Lexus. I am not standing behind them. I'm not some Lexus fanboy or whatever. Actually, they have created some products that I, I genuinely just did not like. You know, certain SUVs, even their flagship hybrid, you know, their LS500H. Wasn't actually a big fan of it. I have publicly, you know, made videos, you know, discussing this, you know, my, my distaste for those vehicles. But in other cases, there are other vehicles I absolutely love. Like I currently own the 2020 LC500. I am heavily invested in that car and I absolutely love it. I actually think it might even be one of the best cars ever made. And then there's the IS. The IS and the RC, like that whole duo, is one of my most favorite cars in their lineup. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. Because when I drove the IS 350F Sport, the 2014 model year, which is the first year of that generation, that third generation, I loved it. I actually couldn't even find anything to really fault with that car. And all the changes that they've made to this new one for 2021, they've pretty much perfected that little formula that they had going on with that car. You know, many people, they claim to be enthusiasts or, you know, whatever, whatever these self-proclaimed people are. You know, a lot of them, they wanted to see a twin turbocharged engine. They wanted a, a V8 version and all this stuff. And neither of those things have happened. Well, there is a turbo, but I'll, I'll get to that. But it's true. This car, it utilized the exact same engines as before. There is an IS300 model and an IS350. The IS300 either uses the four-cylinder turbo or a naturally aspirated V6, a detuned version of what you get in the IS350. And the IS350, of course, utilizes that exact same three and a half liter V6, produces 311 horsepower in this case, and they up the torque like by three. You know, it makes 280 pound speed of torque versus the 277 pound speed of torque that it used to make. And this thing, the IS350 F Sport is rated to do about 5.6 seconds to 60. All this, you might be saying, oh, and here's the other part. The interior pretty much remains unchanged. It's actually a very similar interior to what they've been using till now. And that's actually the one place where I'm gonna critique Lexus. They had this chance, this was pretty much just a refresh and not a redesign of this thing. It's not built from the ground up or anything like that. But the one thing that they could have changed was that interior. Could, you know, that big slab of plastic, they could have replaced it. Again, I have nothing against that interior, but it's just like, you know, it's been like six, seven years now. They could have done something to update that just a little bit. But no matter, we'll get to that in a bit. This car is a very special car to not only the consumers, but to Lexus themselves. This is a phenomenal architecture that they built here. It's a phenomenal machine. It drove great. And again, when I drove that 2014 IS350F Sport, I literally could not find anything to fault with that driving experience. It's everything that I wanted, that of a, like a street car to be essentially. And it delivered. And why do I praise that car so much? Well, it's primarily because it has a soul. And that's a very stupid thing to say. I get that. It just sounds like PR marketing nonsense when you say things like emotion and soul and all that stuff, but it's genuinely true. I felt like I was driving something and that's the biggest highlight for me. And that's, you know, like the LC500, for instance, that's just like an exaggerated version of this. But the IS350 with that naturally aspirated V6, it's a gem of a motor. And I've driven all the, you know, German cars. I've driven the G23 series, I've driven the Audis, I've driven the Benzes, the C43, the S4, A5, all of these things. And the one thing that separated the Lexus from all those vehicles is that emotional connection that I had with that car. I even owned a BMW 440i before I had the LC500. I had the BMW, I had the 440i, the three liter, the turbo, inline six, I had that. And if you took that vehicle away from me and you replaced it with, forget the new one for a second, the current generation IS350, I would have been perfectly satisfied with it. Why is that? It's that emotional attachment. And Lexus, when they went out to develop this new one, they continued that. In fact, they built upon that. And 
the key things that they kept saying in that press release was they wanted to keep the refinement. They wanted to keep that linear driving characteristic. They wanted to improve upon that. And this is something that you also see in their flagship car, the L LC. Very easy car to drive, you know, like the brake pedal, the steering, you know, these sort of things that they were touting in the IS press release. You know, they want to keep the steering and the brakes, they wanted that linear feel. And of course they kept that naturally aspirated V6, again, for that linear power delivery, for that confidence inspiring feel for the driver. That's what they wanted and that's what they want to go for. And again, Lexus isn't stupid. I'm actually very happy that they stuck to their guns and that they made the car the way that they did. And I'm happy that they didn't fall for some whiny little commenters in a YouTube video. You know what I'm saying? I'm so happy that they didn't listen to that. You know, I'm glad that they didn't put some twin turbo charge thing or they borrowed an engine from BMW. I'm glad they didn't do any of those things. I'm glad that they realized that they have a phenomenal product and that the engineers want to build upon that. They took a bit of weight out of it. They enhanced the suspension. They added 19 inch wheels to the F Sport model, which, you know, it's whatever. But I, I get it, Lexus isn't stupid. I know that they kept a very good ride quality with this vehicle. I know they didn't sacrifice that, but yes, that is something that you get with the F Sport model. Uh, 18s are on offer, but for like the more base model cars. The new car, it looks stunning. It is a perfect kind of evolution of what the previous design was. Nothing about it looks strange. Everything looks good. It does utilize a lot of these kind of similar or same uh, design elements that the Lexus UX use, uses, that little SUV nonsense. Again, one of the cars I don't like that Lexus makes, that UX. Yeah, it utilizes a lot of those design elements, but it looks good. And that's really all that matters. It's a great looking car. They kind of extended it out a little bit. They made it like a few inches longer. So it's about 185 inches long total. It's a good size. I do like it. And the third generation IS, Pretty spacious car. I have no issues fitting in the back. See, I'm five foot eleven. I fit in the front. I fit in the rear. Plenty of headroom. It's one of the complaints that the second generation IS had. People didn't, did not like the fact that the rear seats were pretty much useless with that car. So, the uh, this fourth gen is even longer than that. So that's nice. Another thing, you know, Lexus they invested hundreds of millions of dollars in like this new kind of testing development plant or whatever they have like this new test track now is like 3.3 miles long and that's that they made this test course and this whole facility essentially for future performance vehicles but the is this 2021 model year was the first car that was actually developed on this track essentially and i saw the track it looks amazing i i would love to actually drive pretty much any car on that track it actually looks pretty awesome to me Again, they went for that soulful character with the car, with the driving. Driving was very important to them. You know, this is a sports sedan, like a true sports sedan for them. And they have that double wishbone suspension, which none of the German cars, I think, aside from Audi and like the Infiniti Q50 or whatever, all the other cars pretty much use a strut-based suspension. So this is one of the few cars that utilize that double wishbone architecture that does so much for ride comfort to lower the center of gravity, which is another thing that they worked on, along with reducing weight, you know, having new wheels, they have a new BBS wheel on option for the F Sport trims. It's like four pounds less than the standard 19 inch wheel that comes with the F Sport trim. These dynamic things, you know, that's what gives it that stance, that look, and that handling characteristic that they wanted to achieve. And from driving the previous generation car, I know exactly what they did. I know how they pretty much just wanted to make this car sharper and just a little bit more refined in certain key areas. You know, all these seemingly minute changes, you know, like sh shedding a few pounds here, uh, retuning the suspension a little bit, you know, recalibrating that steering wheel, you know, having the larger wheels to improve that steering input and that quicker steering response, you know, retuning that, uh, the same eight speed automatic transmission that they've been using, which is a great transmission in the F Sport trim, mind you, I'm gonna talk about that in a bit, but retuning these things, they sound like small little changes, but when you compound them together, it just transforms a vehicle. So I've driven the G20 3 Series and great handling car, but lacks a bit of soul. This car, it's going to inject that soul, but it's probably going to have a similar kind of dynamic because they improved the chassis of this car. It's going to have a similar kind of handling capability as that vehicle, as some of these German cars now. Because that's one of the things I mentioned driving the previous generation car it was like one or two percent lacking in terms of the chassis dynamic behind like the bmw 3 series cars so it, they addressed that here 
I've also driven cars like the G70, which I actually did not think I would like that car, but actually I, I do kind of does drive a little bit similar to a BMW 3 Series, and that car utilizes a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6, and it's a faster car, and I don't particularly like that over the IS 350F Sport. Just there's something about ringing the nuts out of that motor that is just special. And that's just something that a spec sheet can't tell you. And the Lexus specifically said that this car is not all about the specs. This car is more than that. But here's the thing. Lexus is playing in a difficult place here because let's be honest, car people nowadays, they're spec sheet whores. All they care about is the spec sheet. The spec sheet rules everything now. The spec sheet is essentially what makes a good car to a lot of these people. And this car on paper is not delivering. And it's unfortunate because in real world driving, the IS is just near perfect. Nothing in this world is perfect, but that car was just great. And all these fine tweaks that they made, I know it's gonna be phenomenal. But the commitment is obviously there, obviously, because they made this whole facility and test track and all that stuff, and that's great. Now, let's talk about some of that interior components because there is a new infotainment, but not really. It's a 10.3 inch screen, just an enlarged screen from what you got before. But it does give you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and Alexa. You know, they just went all in with that. They just gave you all of that stuff. You know, that's great. Me personally, I don't even care about infotainment, but it does utilize that same whole trackpad situation, you know, kind of similar to what you get in like a Lexus RX or something like that. Whatever. You know, these, this is like where a lot of people got really disappointed. The interior looks pretty much exactly the same. I did like the previous generation's interior layout. I actually did not really find any faults with it. It was very ergonomic, easy to use. However, really the only key thing that they did here was kind of move the screen three inches closer to you, give you the Apple CarPlay Android Auto, and called it a day. This was their one opportunity to fix that, to remedy that, to you know maybe give it a little bit more flair to the interior, but Lexus didn't do that. And you know, it's funny because it pretty much helped it to not date the current car, which is phenomenal because the Lexus IS is a car that I recommend to people very often if they can afford it in the used market because they keep their value like crazy because it's a highly coveted car. That formula just works. Lexus knows that it works. They know they have a great formula on their hands and they didn't fall for any other nonsense. They didn't put some twin turbo nonsense in here. They just stuck to what's true and what works and they just refined it. And I love it and I appreciate it. Now, let's just finish up here. You know, let's talk about some of the other engine options that you get here. You get that four cylinder, of course, and you know, you, you have, it's a rear wheel drive car still, of course, but you still have all wheel drive on offer on pretty much all these engine options. And when you go all wheel drive, you're gonna get a six speed automatic, which again, a lot of people think it's archaic. Why are they using that? Because it just works. A six speed automatic, I said this multiple times in Mazda reviews that when you have less gears, it's just less gears for the vehicle to jump down when you peg it. This is a comparison I made with the Acura TLX and the Acura TSX. Like the eight speed automatic dual clutch thing that they use is amazing, but when you step on it, there's like far more lag than the five speed automatic because the computer needs to jump down far more gears to get you to where you need to be. Whereas if you went from fifth gear to second gear or from eighth to second, it's a far less of a jump with the, with the less gear setup. So I don't mind the six speed at all. But they did retune or revise these things, of course. And I'm looking forward to it. Honestly, this is a car I would personally consider leasing for myself. I genuinely find great value in driving an IS. So I understand all the minute changes that they made. They contribute so much more into this car. They finally made it sharper, a little bit more dynamic. And I appreciate what they've done here. And I'm very proud of them for sticking to what they know works and is good. They understand that they have a quality product on their hands. So very happy to see the car. I like it. That's my personal thoughts. So um, again, it's not perfect. There are some aspects, of course, you know, this was their opportunity to change a few things and they didn't like the interior, but so be it. But with that said, rather long rant, but let me know your thoughts about this car down in the comment section below. Would you consider buying this thing? Would you choose this over the newly like kind of released Acura TLX? You know, there's a 2021 TLX now. It's front wheel drive base, of course, but they did update their interior on their end. They, Lexus didn't really do that here. But which one of these two cars would you choose? Would you, do you even like either of these vehicles? Let me know. But there you go. That's my thoughts. Thank you again for watching. Take care and goodbye.